Um, I'll talk about some strategic priorities. We'll go through the recommended operating budget. We'll spend some time on the assessed values and the recommended property tax rate. And then we'll talk about the capital budget. Um, again, we have many budget work sessions scheduled so we can go deeper into all these different, all these different areas. I also wanted to say the, um, uh, this year we're doing a little different. In prior years, we always did the capital budget and the tax rate first, and then the operating budget. You get it all at one time. So this is a, a real uh, budget, uh, what's the right word? It, there you go, bonanza. You get the full bonanza. All righty. So you've heard me mention before that uh, I'm really proud of the organization as we worked our way through the pandemic. Uh, and you've heard me say that uh, when we went into the pandemic, it's not that long ago, think about March of 2020. And we were in fiscal year 20 and we asked businesses to close. Think about that. Schools shut down. And we didn't know really what was in store for our citizens, our residents. Um, conventions stopped being held. So you, you remember that time. And we didn't know what the financial outlook for the city was going to be. Uh, but most of our employees had to come to work each and every day, whether it was police, fire, the water department, TPW. And so I'm really proud of the way the organization worked its way through COVID and the pandemic and really without a, a playbook, right? I think we just had thousands of well-intended employees doing the right thing. And I think that's how you get through a pandemic. We were very conservative during the pandemic when we thought about uh, how we were spending money and how we were projecting revenues. And if you remember, we had a hiring freeze for a period of time during that pandemic. And we weren't allowing departments to hire folks. We put capital projects on hold to make sure we knew where all the cash was that the city was spending on capital projects. Uh, and now we've worked our way through the pandemic. And I'll tell you, we are financially very strong in our conservative approaches during that pandemic. I think have positioned us very well as we come if you want to say coming out of the pandemic, and I'll get into some of those numbers as we go. One of the themes of the budget is a safe and clean community. Uh, so you'll hear about how we are recommending resources toward safety. In some ways, that means public safety and police and fire. In some areas, it means the safety of employees. In some areas, it means uh, safety for pedestrians and safety for vehicular movement. So we're going to spend some time about safety and it's a broad and used in a broad way. We're also going to talk about making sure that we are doing our best to keep the community clean. And I think safety and cleanliness are related and you'll hear more about that. I've told some people the story of, uh, it was last October, I spent some time in a city in the Northwest and they were just opening up from COVID. So this was one of the first conventions, I said city in the Northwest, right? Okay, Portland. Um, and they were just coming out of the pandemic. It was one of the first conventions they had it uh, the convention center, and I thought the city was awful from a cleanliness standpoint and from a safety standpoint. They were telling the visitors to that convention where to go, where not to go for your own safety. The, and I'm just saying it looked like the picture on the left. It, it felt like they let the city go. And they had folks in Portland that were apologizing for their city. And I thought, what a horrible thing that citizens of a community were not proud of their city, right? 
And so it caused me to think about, I want to make sure that I'm proud of the city, which I am. I want you to be proud of the city. I want our employees to be proud of the city. And most importantly, I want our citizens and our residents to be proud of the city. And I think part of that starts with making sure we have a safe and clean community. I also want to take this opportunity to thank the voters of Fort Worth for approving the bonds that we had just this recent May. A lot of work goes into preparing for a bond program. It is now our responsibility to implement all those projects that were approved by the voters. All those projects are needed for the city that is growing by about 20,000 people a year. Now we're gonna, we haven't, is Roger in here? There he is. Don't make eye contact with him. But next week, I'm going to ask him to start on the 2026 bond program, right? And so when you think about a growing city like we are growing, we not only have to implement the program for 22, we're still implementing some of the projects from 2018, but it's also time to think about the next bond program as well, and it will be here before we know it. These next couple of slides is really a reminder in some ways that we're no different than other businesses in the current times. Think about other businesses and what you've heard about them being able to recruit and retain a top-notch workforce. Well, we're in the same situation. We've got to do all we can to recruit and retain the best employees. And you'll hear about things in the budget. We've got money in there for pay for performance. We have money in the budget for uh, making sure that our uh, pay is competitive in the different marketplaces that we compete. There's money in there to deal with health insurance. And importantly, is also that fifth year uh, phase of the strategy for the pension. So. As an employer, we're putting in more money for the pension, and we'll be asking employees to participate in that, in, in that as well. But recruitment and retention, a very uh, important part of the overall budget. And we're also impacted by the cost of living. Fuel prices impact the city, just like they do other households. Uh, inflation, interest rates, we're all going to be impacted by that. But I also want to use this slide. Uh, one of the other factors that we are very conscious about is the cost of the city on our citizens and our residents. And it's not just through the property tax rate. It's through our water rates or our stormwater rates or the cost to pick up garbage. And we're also going to talk about the environmental fee, but we're very conscious of the affordability for our residents and our businesses here in the city. This just a reminder, again, that a lot of the decisions we make, it's not just about today, but it's about future generations. This is talking about the growth that's coming. It also mentions open space as well, and that to me is a program about are we doing the right things today to uh, make this place great for the next generation and not just for us because we're here right now? Public engagement. Renee will get up after I'm finished and talk about additional community engagement. This is more to talk about kind of up to this point in time. Um, there are a lot of inputs, a lot of feedback that goes into the budget. We had a biannual community survey that you are aware of. We had the Steer the Budget campaign. We had numerous bond program meetings that were just in April and May that people gave us feedback, not just on the bond program, but about everything else we do as well. We have budget stakeholder meetings. We have, as you know, 
a number of boards and commissions. We get feedback at neighborhood meetings, uh, you name it. We're going to also, and again, Renee will get up here when I'm finished to talk about the additional community engagement we'll do over the next six weeks uh, related to the budget. Again, you'll hear a lot about safe and clean community, infrastructure, stewardship, supporting growth, the workforce recruitment and retention, and then this is like, a, what's this called, foreshadowing, that we're going to recommend reducing the property tax rate, and more on that in a minute. So let's jump into the operating budget. The city spends roughly $2.4 billion, 2.324, in all the operation that the city's involved in. The general fund there is on the top, and we will spend a lot of time talking about the general fund for all the right reasons. That's where the property tax rate gets spent. That's where the sales tax majority is. That's police, fire, parks and rec, libraries. Uh, parks and recreation and so forth. So a lot of attention will be put on the general fund. We also have enterprise funds that would include water and stormwater, just to name a couple. We have special revenue funds that includes crime control and prevention district for one. It will also include the environmental fund that we'll talk about. We have internal service funds that are more of an internal operation that includes like the fleet operation. And this year is our... Uh, that in, uh, information technology services will be added as an internal service fund. We also have debt service funds. But overall, we're spending $2.3 billion in all different kinds of resources, whether it's water revenue, stormwater revenue, garbage collection rates, as well as property tax and sales tax. This is just another way of showing it in a pie chart, and again, we're going to start with the, the general fund. This will show you the revenue streams for the general fund, and the general fund for fiscal year 23 is recommended at $915.3 million. Property tax is very strong, and I'll go into assess values in a second. Sales tax has been incredibly strong. This is one area where we were conservative on our estimates during COVID, and the revenue is coming in a lot stronger than we anticipated at one time. Property tax makes up 58% of the total pie. And when you add in sales tax, that's what, 81% of the, all the money is in those two sources of revenue. Let's talk about assessed values and the tax rate. We've used this chart in the past. The top line is total assessed value. Right? This is all properties in Tarrant, our part of Denton, our part of Wise, our part of Parker, and our part of Johnson County. So it's a composite of a number of counties. The orange line, which is the middle line, is what is taxable. Right? So this is what's called the net adjustable taxable value. So that's the number we use to generate the property tax revenue that the city anticipates bringing in. Very strong growth over fiscal year 22. The green line is then the property tax revenue line that is a product of the assessed value, the orange line, and a product of the property tax rate. Does that make sense? So we're anticipating that we'll bring in 664 with the recommended property tax rate. If you break down the growth and assess values, 
This will show you that the largest change came in existing values. This is not new development. So the biggest increase, nearly $10 billion, is from growth in existing values. The $2.7 billion that you see there, that's the new development number. All right? So it's a combination of two pieces. One's new development, stuff that didn't exist last year that's now on the books, and then the growth in values and all the other properties in Fort Worth. So our net taxable number is right now at $100 billion. The budget includes reducing the tax rate by two cents. All right. Shown a different way. We're going to, the values are going up 14.5%. The tax rate's coming down two cents. The property tax revenue is still growing by that 11.4% amount. All right. So the tax rate brings that down a little bit but the revenue is still growing at 11.4%. This is how we allocate the current tax rates. So this is the current year, fiscal year 22. It's 73 and a quarter going to 71 and a quarter, and we're going to change how it's allocated. All right. There's a couple slides on that. The recommended tax rate allocations go from the overall goes from 7325 to 7125. Debt we're recommending staying the same. Pay as you go is increasing from six and a half cents to seven cents. So the entire reduction of the tax rate is coming off of operations. So two and a half cent reduction on the operation tax rate. Half cent increase on the page you go. Debt stays the same. I just said that. And then this is the revenue growth proportions for operations for the page you go part of capital maintenance and for the debt service side. Shifting now to expenditures in the general fund. I'm not going to go through all these. We'll have time to in the budget work sessions to talk about. It. I'm going to hit the increases at a high level. Staying in those areas of safe, clean city, talking about um, uh, supporting growth and maintaining infrastructure. Here we go. If you take the police and fire department, that's over half of the spending in all the general fund. We also break out transportation, public works, park and rec, economic development. Those would be the, the top five, and then everything else is in the other category. So what's in the recommended budget? One, well, again, we'll talk about reducing the property tax rate two cents. And I'm going to go through these categories. When you think about safety, I know first thing that comes to mind is police. Police, when you think about the budget, it's in the general fund and it's crime control and prevention district. We'll spend time in a minute on crime control and prevention district. But there's more resources in there for patrol, investigators for crimes against children, homicide investigators, 911 communications, hope team, crisis intervention, and neighborhood police officers. As talked about earlier in the year, the budget expands the crossing guard program and, and includes middle schools. We're adding a second engine company in far north Fort Worth, the fire department's component of the HOPE team. And there's also uh, positions in there for uh, safety equipment 
and taking care of that. There are network improvements in TBW. I'll, get, I'll go more into street lights and pavement markings. Uh, but there's code officers as well for multifamily registration and inspections. And when we talk about the environmental fund, we'll be talking about more resources for making the city clean. There's positions in development services. I think I told DJ he got everything. <laughs> Didn't I tell you that, DJ? Uh, and all that is to facilitate the development process. We're also moving more staff under DJ's direct supervision as well. So you'll see some transfers from other funds, mainly water, stormwater to be another one, that will be moved into development services and then adding development services positions as well. In addressing some of the prior bond programs, we're opening this, we'll be opening the Southwest Library sometime in fiscal year 23 and the Northwest Community Center, right? And Parks and Recreation will open in the upcoming year as well. And those resources are included in the budget. We're gonna increase, as I mentioned, the tax rate for pay-as-you-go from six and a half to seven cents. That entire additional half cent is going to two things, street lights, and pavement markings. So we can so we can tell you the money that's tied to the pays you go is going to put us on a 3 4 year cycle for all pavement markings. I'm looking at William over here. He's nodding. And street lights are going to be fixed in 30 days. When you call them in and they're going to be fixed in 30 days, right? All right. Oh, we meant to say that. We're going to say it again, too, at the, toward the end. And there's, uh, again, the other pay-as-you-go increases since we kept pay-as-you-go. When you think about it, not only did it stay the same, but it increased. It means we captured all the assessed value increase for pay-as-you-go. And so the money there is for park maintenance, uh, road maintenance, those other things that have been traditionally paid for out of the pay as you go fund, and that also includes the neighborhood improvement program. Uh, the water fund will also um, continues the replacement of cast iron pipe. That's on a, um, a uh, fast schedule as well. Now I'm sh shifting into other funds. And we'll talk about enterprise funds, special revenue funds, uh, primarily, uh, I think that's what I'm going to do in the next few slides. Enterprise funds. Excuse me. We have a number of those, including water and sewer, municipal airports, municipal parking, solid waste fund, and the stormwater utility. The water and sewer fund. What's that first bullet say? No retail rate increases. So being conscious, again, in our impact, uh, on the affordability question of folks in Fort Worth, there are no rate increases in the water fund. There are areas, though, in the water fund that have some of the highest inflationary increases. When I, I remember Chris telling our group, like the cost of chemicals to treat water is something like 180% increases year over year. And so He's managing the water operation uh, in a way that allows us to go to the citizens in the upcoming year without a retail rate increase. Solid waste fund. There are no recommended increases in the solid waste fund. There's one caveat of that, is that we're recommending that we shift some of the costs that are in the solid waste fund to the environmental fund. Keep that thought there. If you'll remember from prior conversations, the solid waste fund is almost entirely funded as a, out of residential fees. Yet we are 
we have some programs in the solid waste fund that I think need to be paid by a broader group of payers, meaning businesses and other organizations. And so we are currently in the solid waste fund. We do um, illegal dumping, litter pickup with uh, crews out of the solid waste fund that are almost uniquely and entirely paid for by residential uh, customers, and I think there needs to be a broader base. More on that when we talk about the environmental fund. The shift in those costs from the solid waste fund to the environmental fund also put the solid waste fund on a path to sustainability. If you remember from prior conversations, we were talking about needing perhaps residential fee increases to make it sustainable. Stormwater utility, no fee increases in the stormwater fund. Continued implementation of the capital program as Jennifer so ably did a week ago, shared with you. And I think we also talked about the partnership with Parks and Recreation on the drainage and erosion study. Municipal parking is returning to a pre-pandemic level. Uh, the parking fund uh, was impacted when people didn't come to work and the parking fund was impacted when people didn't go to conventions. Uh, the general debt service fund last year made the debt service payment for the municipal parking fund. You might remember that. This puts the parking fund back on track where it can make all its obligations with the revenues that it brings in. Aviation department, Rogers managing three general aviation airports. Special revenue funds, we'll talk primarily about crime control prevention, culture and tourism and the environmental protection. I think we even have a slide here on the golf, right? So crime control and prevention district, again, mostly sales tax revenue. You've seen some of these numbers already. Uh, healthy increase in the sales tax revenue. We're expanding the crossing guard program as previously mentioned. And then again, there's positions in there for the HOPE team, neighborhood policing, crisis intervention. There's also the program at the Chisholm Trail Community Center. And as we've talked about before, the dollars are increased for partners with a shared mission as well. Culture and tourism, those revenues are getting back to a pre-COVID amount. There's still a lot of work to do since we lost some ground on the um, culture and tourism revenues. So we've used, as everybody knows, ARPA money to kickstart the convention center expansion. And there'll be more discussion about the phase one, phase two expansion of the convention center in upcoming meetings. The Environmental Protection Fund. We've had the Environmental Protection Fund since 1996. And what the recommended budget includes is this focus on doing a better job in keeping our city clean. So we've been asking folks just randomly, have you seen a street sweeper in Fort Worth? Right? Just, just one question. And if people say yes, then we say, do you know how many street sweepers the city of Fort Worth has? And the answer is two. That is just an example of um, how we think we can make the city cleaner. So part of the recommended fee increase is to handle the transition of costs from the solid waste fund. But the other part of the environmental fee increase is to do a better job cleaning the city, which means more litter crews, more street sweepers. And so we're recommending going from two to 12. 
We're going to increase the number of crews that do illegal uh, dumping response. And so the fee for a resident, the fee is currently, I know you're wondering, the fee is currently 50 cents a month. The recommendation is that fee for a resident will go to $1.50 a month. So 50 cents to $1.50. Same corresponding increases if you're a commercial property. Same corresponding increase if you're an industrial property. We know there'll be more conversation on the environmental fund as we move forward in the, um, in the budget work session, in the work sessions, but we think this is an opportunity for the city to do a better job um, keeping us clean. Municipal golf. Richard made me use this one. All right. The good news is uh, golf is moving in the right direction, meaning we have a plan to remove it from being subsidized by the general fund. And so in a number of years, the golf subsidy that currently exists will go away. I said that publicly too, Ms. Bivens. So. All right, internal service funds, we have a number of them, the largest being the group health fund. Then information technology, risk, capital projects, and the fleet operation make up all the internal service funds for the city. Just as a recap, all the different funds in summary, again, going from two, just under 2.1 billion to 3 billion. This is what is happening with the number of authorized positions. Um, the general fund, and CCPD, police is growing by about 100 positions. Fire, if I got the numbers right, are growing by about 23. And I want to say development services is about 39 of the total. So there are four departments that make up most of those increases that you see on that page. In the special revenue fund, the largest increase will be the increase in the environmental fund and the number of positions there. Shifting to the capital improvement program. We talk about uh, capital financing in a number of different ways and using the combination of cash and debt. And so we want to maintain the infrastructure primarily using cash. And when we talk about new infrastructure, then we can talk about other revenue streams, including impact fees, and debt. You've seen this slide before. I want to spend a little time here. Uh, <clears throat> because you, uh, when you set a goal, sometimes it takes many years to get there. And when you think about bond programs and maintaining infrastructure, that happens over a number of years. So in this slide, what we're trying to show is we have bond programs every four years. That's why we're starting to think about 2026. And we talk about what we need to do with the tax rate and Ms. Bivens, Mayor, uh, Council Member Flores, you may remember some of these conversations about how are we going to dedicate more money for capital in both debt service and in cash so we can maintain the infrastructure that we're doing. And so when you look at the bottom two rows, the goal essentially was to try to get to about a third of the tax rate Right, for a growing city, a third of our tax rate should be for capital, whether it's debt or cash. And we're getting close to that 33%, right? We're now over 30%. <clears throat> and we started back at 21% back in 2014. And then pay, we've made pay-as-you-go 
The cash part of that, we should also be, I'd argue, a third of the amount that we spend in capital, a third of that should be cash. And again, we're almost at a third of that right there. But it takes time to do it, and I think discipline over many, many years, which I appreciate that from the mayor and city council, that we're in a much better place now in planning for infrastructure and then maintaining the infrastructure that we're building. So capital projects that are underway, we got the future city hall and the new council chamber. I think there's a presentation at your next meeting on that. Uh, we have fire station 45, uh, fire station 26, which is a replacement. We also have the fire station relocations that were part of the bond program. We have the South Patrol Division headquarters, Southwest Library, and the Diamond Hill and Northwest Community Centers all underway. For the goals for the capital side, it's to, again, continue implementing the 18 program, start the 22 program, and then look at what we need to do, both related to uh, the maintaining the infrastructure that we're building. I mentioned that the pay-as-you-go includes the neighborhood improvement strategy, and then we're all trying we're trying to tie it into the comprehensive plan as well. The CIP is done by different funds. I think you've seen this slide before. There'll be a capital plan for gen the general. Uh, program, aviation, public events, stormwater, and water. When you look at the capital plan, we do it over multiple years. Those are all the funds together. This is capital, so it's not the operating side. And when you look at what we're spending a year on infrastructure, just think about every year we're spending between two and $300 million dollars just in the water fund, right? So when you think about an infrastructure heavy operation, that would be water. And when you look at it overall, we're spending anywhere roughly 500 million to 876 million a year when you include all the funds and capital. Everybody will, every council member will get a document that will list out the projects by fiscal year. This is just looking at the general CIP in the different categories. This is the pay-as-you-go portion. Again, growing from just under 53 million a year to over 65 million. Most of the increase you see is going into uh, TPW, and that half cent, again, that is increasing from the tax rate is going to street lights and pavement markings. Don't feel sorry for Richard. When you look at that park and rec number, we have shifted the mowing money that used to be in the pay-as-you-go into his general fund operating budget. Richard is responsible for all the mowing in the city, right? And we gave him additional money. And he's now also responsible for all the alleyway maintenance in the city. And he was given all the money for that, too. So if you have any issues with mowing or alleyway maintenance, that's Richard. All right. This just showing the distribution of pays you go in a pie chart. I think I might have said this a few times. There it is, there it is again for uh, transportation. It's even in writing. Councilmember Bivens, look at that. Three-year replacement cycle reduces response times to 30 days for pavement markings. Increases the total crews for street lights. Reduces response time to 30 days. And then there's money for that other stuff. The other page you go that we talk about is for property management. 
Steve is responsible for all the other buildings that the city owns. So that goes for roofs, HVACs, so forth. We have the neighborhood improvement strategy. We've got technology infrastructure and then park infrastructure as well. So tying some of this back up, we have focused primarily on this budget on making sure that we are safe and, and the resource allocation that we have in the recommended budget, that we're doing what we can to be good stewards of the infrastructure. We're addressing the growth uh, challenges and have added resources appropriately. And we are also focused on recruiting and retaining the best employees. And included in that is also a property tax rate reduction as part of the recommended budget. But there's more. We have work sessions scheduled for the 10th, 12th, 25th, 26th, and on September 8th and 9th, there's public hearings on the budget and the tax rate, and we're scheduled to approve the budget and the tax rate and the CFP on September 27th. 